Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. A lot to talk about in this update, but first I want to take you to Winter Park, and this is the case up in Steamboat and Loveland, a base and new snow over the last 24 hours here in Colorado from a southern track storm. Now today there's another um, disturbance that's going to ride down um, the flow out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, some Vanguard light snow through Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. So we may add another couple of inches today at some of the ski areas, but much bigger snow is is coming down the road. Here's what I'm seeing this morning. Um, so that area of light snow today, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, really just pre-storm snow, appetizer type of snow. The three storm cycle still intact. Confidence is there. One six through one fourteen. We're talking feet of accumulation between these three storm systems in many, many places. Wait till you see the grand total map. In California, you've got snow coming 1.6, 1.9, 1.10, and 1.11, and 112. Then the third storm of the cycle, around 1.13, 114, 115, still looks like it's going to drag down an Arctic blast. This could be some of the coldest air we've seen in, in years in some places. Um, so that's also something I'll cover in this update, but in the northeast. So these three storm systems will stay intact from the west and then move up into the northeast. So it'll be a coast to coast type of event. All right, let me take you back and show you a water vapor here this morning. So there's our little southern track area of low pressure right there exiting Colorado and New Mexico. Um, let me just show you the a little vanguard area of precip. You can almost see like a little bit of a front right here. So that'll race down through and bring another, you know, one to three, one to four inches of accumulation, maybe a little bit more in some spots. But here's the main low. This is the big pattern changing low up here. Gulf of Alaska, Canada, that's the one that's going to lower the boom and bring down um, the cold air, at least the initial surge. The coldest air waits till after the third storm, but that first one will be the pattern changing low and everything's just going to rotate around it as it comes down into the lower 48. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So that's the view by this afternoon. You can see that little wave of snow coming through the Tetons, Wasatch, moving into Colorado. But here comes the main storm system, Pacific Northwest, 1.6 and 1.7, and it drops down. This is 1.7 in the morning, widespread snow all the way down to the valley floors, much colder air in place, finally, uh, with the buckling of the northern branch. Here's 1.7 in the afternoon. By 1-8, the storm is moving and departing out of Colorado uh, in the afternoon. There it goes. Here comes storm number two from the Pacific Northwest. Then that drops down into the Intermountain West, 1-9, 1-10. And there it is by the end of the day on 1-10s dropping down. So first storm, 1-6, 1-7. Second storm, late 1-8, 1-9, 1-10, maybe early 1-11. Um, and then the third storm would be 1-12, 1-13, 1-14. So all three storms... Um, will bring snow and progressively colder temperatures in the forecast. All right, let's talk about the jet stream. So this is 1.6. This is the first storm, the pattern changing low. You can see the, the trough um, that has developed with the amplified jet reaching up out of Canada, bringing down the cold air. Lots of support. Um, and also you can see off to the, uh, the northeast, east coast, look at that uh, subtropical jet um, and polar jet support with a jet streak running through, that's going to produce snow 1617 with a storm system out there. All right, 19, so this is the second storm. You can see the next dip in the jet moving in from the Pacific Northwest. That would then translate through the Intermountain, uh, the Rockies there, the Intermountain West. Here's the third storm system, big broad trough. Now this is the one that could bring down that chunk of Arctic air. And we're talking, you know, air temps that, that could run 30 to 50 degrees below the 30-year average for this time of the year, that time of January. Um, air temps could widely be below zero across the Intermountain West. So that's 113. That continue into 114. All right. I want to show you this. This is the grand total map. This is 15 through 114 with everything accounted for um, from all three storm systems and that little wave of snow that comes down through the Intermountain West today. Um, anywhere you see purple magenta, that's over a foot. And there are a lot of places over a foot. So let's just, let's just talk about this. So Tetons, probably a solid two feet by the time all is said and done, maybe a little bit more. Um, in the Wasatch, looking at probably uh, 40 inches as far as a grand total around Alta, Snowbird, less, a little bit less in Big Cottonwood and less up in Park City, Deer Valley. 
in the Sierra, assuming that third storm system holds together and we get somewhat of a barrier jet set up against the Sierra, we could be looking at totals like that of 30 to 60 inches. In Colorado, biggest numbers are Western and Southwest Colorado in particular. And I'm going to show you a zoom in map here in just a second of the I-70 corridor in Southwest Colorado. But look at those numbers out of the three storms. The third storm that comes in with the coldest air, that's the one that could really generate some big totals in parts of Colorado. But uh, one to two feet, maybe three, four feet down in the San Juans. Some nice snow for Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire in Tahoe. Love seeing that. Uh, up in central and northern Idaho, rich flow in the northwest Montana. Look at interior BC. Pacific Northwest, the numbers have remained fairly steady throughout these updates that I've been giving you. Big numbers through Washington and Oregon. All right, let me zoom in on this grand total map. So this is the central uh, mountain corridor, the I-70 corridor through Colorado, looking at about one to two feet. This is a grand total from all three storm systems. I'm going to break down each day across the west in just a second. Let's go to southern Colorado. So this is 1.5 through 1.14, so grand totals. We could see snow all the way down to the valley floor of Durango and Bayfield. That's how cold it is, especially, and a lot of this gets fluffed up and, and generated from that third storm system, 1.12 to 1.14 with that cold air. Look at Wolf Creek. I've got 50 inches of snow. I don't think that's out of the question. You know, I think my range, uh, my, my notes was 40 to 50 inches. So 51 is probably on the high side, but it's certainly possible. Um, and look at it, you know, three feet over Silverton and Purgatory. Okay, let me break this down a little bit for you. So this is the first period in phases. 1.5 through 1.8, that's how much snow I think is going to fall across the west. Significant, right? Moderate to heavy in most cases. Here's phase number two. So this is 1.9 through 1.11. Significant, again, in many places, especially up in parts of uh, the, the Pacific Northwest and central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana. Here's the third phase. This is the coldest storm of the three, 1.12 through 1.14. We, I'm assuming we get the perfect jet set up in ore graphics over the Sierra. Um, otherwise, the numbers will be lower, but you can see the numbers in parts of southwest Colorado with that cold air. Big snow accumulation over Wolf Creek in just this period alone, two feet. And the same would be uh, the, the case for uh, Purgatory and probably close to uh, Silverton. So that's a big period. Look at Snowball in Arizona. All right, um, let's go to the, uh, the northeast. So three different storm systems. This is a grand total map. You're going to get some on 1617. The 19110 storm is really interesting. It's a powerhouse, very strong winds, really tight circulation, and there's going to be heavy snow at the onset, but it's probably going to change over to a rain-snow mix, even at the ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And then there's another storm for very late in the period as well that could bring accumulation. So big numbers. Uh, we'll end on this grand total map again. I mean, it's, it's just very impressive. I mean, the reason I look at this and it's just so impressive is we've had like a two and a half week vacation here across parts of the West with almost no snow. And now we're finally starting to see snow with big numbers in the, in the future here, 1.5 to 1.14. So we're about to take a very positive turn as far as the snowpack goes because the snowpack is not looking good right now in many places, but we're about to make the change to that. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. I'll do another update later today. This is really exciting stuff, and I'll talk to you later.